All right, welcome to the second part of this mini Serum tutorial course where we are going to be jumping into the actual Wavetable editor itself. So to get there, unfortunately, it doesn't have a tab view. It's an embedded tab or page that you need to click this pencil in either of the oscillators to get to. So I'm going to click it on oscillator A. Well, this is what is called the Wavetable editor. So this top part we're not going to be focusing on, but this is where you can draw in a wavetable using a whole different method. We're going to be focusing on this green section. So you can see down here all these little boxes. Well, these are the individual frames that I kept saying or I kept talking about in the first section of this course where we were cycling through in this wavetable position. Well, this is the actual individual frame view of what's happening. And you can see that as you go from 1 to 12 to 22 to 33 or whatever, there's just slight changes, right? Well, that's what helps make a smooth wavetable. You don't want your wavetable going from this, this view, to this view. It, it's too drastic of a change, and it's not going to sound like a wavetable. It's just going to sound like filtering through audio. And when you start to modulate with your wavetable position, you're actually going to start to hear those changes. So I'm going to show you some tips and tricks to avoid that when you're trying to load your own custom wavetables. And I'm also going to show you how to process it to get a little bit better results. So I have seen some tutorials on YouTube or whatever showing you how to build wavetables. And they've gone outside of Serum to do them, which to me makes sense and doesn't make sense at the same time. So I'm going to initialize a preset here and go to my wavetable editor. The reason why it doesn't make sense is Serum was designed to let you play around and manipulate sounds without having to have the knowledge to create a proper wavetable, but still get a wavetable-esque result. So I saw some tutorials where, where some uh, people were taking sounds and chopping them at zero crossing points and really getting into editing these different sounds together, exporting it as a short, as a short wave file, and then importing it into Serum. But you don't have to do that. I'm going to show you the quickest way that you can start to build your own wavetables. So I am going to open up my bin or my audio browser in Logic. I'm going to click on Media. All right, let's go to All Files. So I'm going to go to Desktop. I have a Vengeance sample here pulled up. It's a cool Deep House bass. So you can see here in the name that it says F. Well, that's really helpful because there's two ways to accurately drag and drop an audio file, a short wave sample, into Serum and actually get to play nicely. The first is to take this drag and drop and you're going to need to know what note it is because it helps if you enter in the 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 note in the formula box so i just typed in f0 and then it's going to say split at 1100 or 1010 samples at note f0 in 0 cents so it's you're giving serum a reference point on where it's going to start to chop up and kind of split these samples of that note well, alternatively, you could also drag and drop into the oscillator wavetable editor itself. So I'm going to go to initialize preset, right? And now let's take this and drag it here. Well, now the only difference is you're faced with these, with these different options. You have three options up here and you have four down here. Well, the easiest one that we're going to be focusing on, because this is all about how to get into using the wavetable editor, in a very musical manner is to select the constant frame size pitch average and then see how it does a pretty good wavetable where it, when you're morphing it from after these first two or three tables it's a pretty subtle change which again I meant when I mentioned before is what you want to go for to get a smooth sound well let's look at my favorite way to do it so far is actually go to your wavetable editor type in your note in this formula and now drag and drop it in and you'll notice that I don't get those options here it's just drag and drop okay so right now I have 21 different frames here inside of the wavetable editor well 21 is not going to be super smooth because you're gonna start to hear if I if I start playing this note right that's a really drastic change so it doesn't sound so much like a wavetable as it does just changing of an actual sample almost. So let's go back to our editor. And there's a few things we can do to clean this sucker up. Well, let's go to the end and see what we have going on. We just have some 
noise here on this on these last two frames 20 and 21 so I'm gonna hold down shift click on these go to add or remove remove multi selection and it removed the ones of just the dead space now the reason why you don't want dead space is if you're modulating with an LFO for instance and it has this type of motion you don't want too much dead space here at the end of that modulation point so let's go back to the wavetable editor and now I'm going to go to morph and you have all these different processing options that you can do but one of the coolest ones to get a really musical result is morph spectral so it's not going to crossfade it's it's doing some voodoo magic here that is going to really smooth out the frames in the wavetable and you can see now that I have 256 technically so serum's doing all that math for you and that's what I was alluding to that you don't have to be a, a math whiz to figure this out. Now let's listen to this when we cycle through the wavetables. Alright, it's much smoother. Now this specific sample that I used right here is very short and choppy. You could use a, you could use a longer sample for sure and that might make it have more of a difference when you start to modulate or move your wave tilt position knob, but this is a pretty good starting point. Right? Because with wavetables, you just need that subtle movement to create that depth and that richness. So there is one method on how I really like to create some wavetables here inside of a Serum's wavetable editor. In the next section of this little tutorial course, I'm going to show you how you can start to use these different drawing tools to manipulate your wavetables even further. I'll see you there.